Hello, Second Sound Wave, and today I am going to be doing the very first video in a sort of sub-series of my Gunpla for Beginners series called Gunpla Breakdown. Basically, I'm going to be breaking down the differences between the various versions of a particular mobile suit that has a massive number of variants that could otherwise be overwhelming. So I'm just going to explain what's different and what's new, what's good and bad about each version of this particular mobile suit. Today I'm going to be doing the Axia. I wasn't originally planning on doing this, but... um. Things came up on another forum I was on, and I realized that there are actually a buttload of versions of the Axia, and a lot of them are bad, and a few of them are good. So, hopefully this will help explain um, what's good, what's bad, and what to look out for. So, first up, we're going to be going over these by um, Axia version from the shows, and we're going to talk about all the versions of the Axia, then all the versions of the Axia repair, and so on. So, with the normal, standard, vanilla Axia design, you have probably the most choices of any of these. First option is the original high grade kit. It's it's not that good. Um, the uh, weapons are, eh. I mean, the shield is like a single piece of blue plastic with a massive white sticker going down the middle. The uh, arm mounted GN sword isn't too bad, but the uh, GN blades are all white and um, well, they're not all white. They have a little bit of blue, but they don't have silver on the blades. Um, the beam sabers only have handles, there's no beam effect parts, but you do get a fifth beam saber that is a solid white blade that cannot be removed, which means you have to paint it. Um, and to top it all off, the hips are awful. Um, they have pretty much no outward movement, and there's no uh, thigh swivel either, so posing's pretty tough. It's definitely the worst version of the Axia out there. Um, I would not recommend it really to anyone. There's many other versions of it that are far better. Now, there's another version of that kit called um, Exia Trans Am. It's another high grade. It's basically the same kit, just molded in um, in sort of uh, like transparent, not really transparent, but like kind of frosty, pink, swirly, metallicish plastic that gives it kind of a glowing look to emulate the uh, Trans Am mode from the show. Um, it's it's basically the same kit, except it's in an even except it's in a very fragile plastic. Um, it's not one I'd recommend. It's kind of out of print, so it's just not worth the money to track you down. Don't bother with it. It has all the problems that the original did. Now, there's another version called the High Grade Exia Trans Am with GN arms. Now, the Trans Am part's kind of a joke because really the only um, thing different is those, uh, you know those uh, purple areas on the original Axia, like on the um, front of the legs, those sort of cables going down to the shoulders? Those purple areas there are all red on the trans, on the quote Trans Am version with the GN arms. So it's basically that same kit with a different sticker sheet. That's not the reason to get it. What's interesting about this is the massive sort of exo armor that it comes with called the GN arms. It turns into like a little flight module. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Um, I believe it got reprinted recently, so it's pretty easy to find. It is expensive. Expect to pay around $40, $50 for it, probably. I don't know if it's really worth it. It's more worth it for the GN arms than the Exia itself, so I wouldn't recommend it as a way to get Exia, but if you just want like a cool mech thing to put your other Gundams and stuff in, it's definitely worth checking out. Now, the best version of the original Exia design that there is is the real grade. Now, it has a few problems of its own, but for the most part, it's awesome. First up, it is a real grade, so it has great color separation as well as um, multiple tones of color. So there's like a few different whites. I think there's a couple different blues. All the weapons are included, and the blades on the handheld swords and the arm-mounted GN sword are all actually vacuum. Not I don't know if it's vacuum plated or whatever. However, they, the pieces are actually chromed. Like, on the sprue, the sprue itself is metallic chromed plastic, and it gives a great effect when the kit's built. And, of course, it has great hip articulation. Um, it fixes pretty much all the problems. The only thing is that it's kind of frustrating to build. The reason being is that um, the GN cables, those purple things I mentioned before, they're this sort of vinyl material that you have to, like, slide in to the plastic and sort of embed into it and hook it into place and they're very stiff and springy and really hard to work with and bend around and 
they're very, very, very frustrating to work with. Um, most of the copies of the kit I've seen online, if you look really closely at the pictures, you can see they either tore or left out or just dropped one or two of the uh, cables just because they're really hard to get in. If you're really patient, really, and you have really steady hands and you're very careful, you can pull it off and once it's all together, it's great. It's just that it's hard to get it together. However, it's still the best version of the Exia there is. Now, there is a Master Grade. Usually Master Grades are pretty awesome. The Master Grade Exia is not awesome. The ankles are phenomenally loose, which undermines any plus positives it could possibly have because it just won't stand up no matter what you do to it. It just does not stand. Um, even when you throw it up in an action base, it just, it's still, it just, it's just not a good kit. Just trust me and avoid it. It does have a couple cool functions like a um, LED unit in the chest that's actually included with the kit, but it's just, it's just not worth the trouble. Don't, don't bother with the Master Grade. Also, um, if you remember my sort of opening tutorial for beginners video I did, um, I mentioned that there were these things called uh, no-grade kits and they were sometimes called high-grade 1 one hundredths. Well, there's a high-grade 1 one hundredth of the Exia. Um, I'm not that familiar with it. It's, I think it's a little better than the high-grade, but not by a whole lot. Um, it's certainly, I don't know, it's not one I'm familiar with. You might come across it in your searches, just know that it's neither the high-grade nor the master-grade. And since it's an out-of-print kit, it's probably going to be pretty expensive and certainly more than it's worth. I wouldn't pay more than like 25 dollars for it, maybe 30. If they're asking like 35, 40, 50, don't, don't bother. It's not worth that kind of money. Um, that pretty much does it for uh, Exia's normal form. However, in the uh, sort of opening episode of the second season, the Exia is back. It's heavily battle damaged, but it's been sort of, sort of had some field repairs done to it. And that's called the Exia Repair, and it is actually pretty darn cool. Unfortunately, there's only um, one way to get it in a plastic form, and that is a master grade kit called Exia Ignited, or Exia Ignition. I think it's called Exia Ignition mode. Every single problem that the Exia had in master grade is present on the master grade Exia Ignition mode. Unfortunately, this is also not the last we're going to be seeing of this kit. Basically, all the master grade Exias are awful. Um, this one's unfortunately no exception because it's the only way to get this version of the Exia. But there are a few other options, so we're just going to keep on going. There's something called the uh, Exia Repair 2. Now this, this doesn't share really any resemblance with the Exia Repair. It's much closer to the original Exia. Basically, the, uh, there's a few cosmetic differences, like the uh, GN cables are completely absent. Um, the sh legs have been retooled so they no longer accommodate them. Um, the sword has a sort of green edge to it. The GN drive's a bit different. Um, there's a few other little tweaks, like the hip skirt's a little different, the weapon storage is different, the uh, hips are a little more prominent. And they did make a kit of it in high-grade form called the Exia Repair 2, and it's, it's decent. They, um, they managed to fix all of the um, hip articulation issues because it's a completely new lower upper leg design, so it has great articulation there. And the new sword does look pretty cool, the translucent green blade. However, it is, of course, not completely accurate to the Season 1 Axia since there are some cosmetic differences, so it's really not a perfect kit. Not to mention, it still has that big stupid sticker on the shield. So they fixed some stuff, but there's also a lot of stuff they kind of left unfixed, which is a shame, because otherwise it would be a great kit. Now, there's another variant of the Axia. This one didn't show up in the show. I don't think it even showed up in the manga. I think this was just some kind of one-off variant thing. But this is what's called the uh, Avalanche Exia or Avalanche Exia Dash, depending on what you want to call it. Um, basically, the only difference is whether or not the legs are built like normal Exias or like the Dash type. Um, and both versions of the kit have the option to do either one. First option is the uh, high-grade kit called Avalanche. I believe it's just called Avalanche Exia, but it might be called Avalanche Exia Dash. Either way, you get the parts to build it both ways. It's basically a really, really souped-up Exia. Um, it's got giant snowshoes, it's got like super shoulder pads, it's got all the old weapons, it's, it's a pretty darn cool kit. Um, it did get reprinted recently, so you can find it, it's pretty readily available. I definitely recommend checking it out. As far as um, high-grade Exias that are in sort of Exia colors, um, I think it's a good one. I think it's a very good one, actually. If you're going to get one version of the high-grade Exia mold, 
that's the actual Exia version, not one of the later variants we're going to talk about, then this is the way to go. Now, there's also, again, a high-grade 1 100th of it. I don't know much about it. it. It's not probably worth the money. It's a pretty obscure kit and therefore probably kind of rare. Um, moving on, there is another series called Build Fighters that basically was the entire series of kits and, to a lesser extent, the show was all about taking older mobile suits and sort of putting a new spin on them with like some new parts and a new color scheme and some new weapons and stuff. And one of those is called Dark Matter Exia. And it's actually pretty cool looking. It's got a sort of dark gray and red color scheme. It's very pointy. It's very jagged. It's got a new flight pack that turns into a bird. It's got a very cool pair of swords that use the blades from the um, original GN sword and the uh, Exia Repair 2 sword. So one of them has like a clear orange blade. Um, the Some parts of it have been really heavily tweaked, like the uh, arm-mounted weapon that used to be the GN sword now has a beam saber coming out, and it's also got a blaster. It uses the Exia Repair 2 style hips, so it has great hip articulation. It's just a really cool kit. Um, unfortunately, there's a Master Grade. You should know by now, Master Grade bad. Don't get the Master Grade Dark Matter Exia. It's just... Everything is compounded by the fact that it's super back heavy and it doesn't do anything the high grade can't. There's another kit from Build Fighters that uses the Axia mold called the Amazing Axia. Or Axia Amazing. I don't know, I always get the name confused, but it's either way, it's the same kit. It's just basically it's dark matter Axia with a few of the sharper edges softened and a more traditional color scheme. The weapons are a bit different too. Um, instead of having a uh, dual handheld swords, so like, you know, the Dark Matter Axia had like that one with the orange blade and the s standard metal blade one, I think they were like the ice sword and fire sword or something. The uh, Amazing Axia actually retains the green-edged um, GN, GN sword on the arm, and then only has one handheld sword, so you don't quite have that same effect the Dark Matter Axia did, not to mention the normal color scheme's a bit bland, although it does still use the repair hips, which is a plus. Um, basically, if you really don't like the color scheme of Dark Matter Exia, go with the Amazing one, but for the most part, I'd recommend the Dark Matter one. Of course, naturally, I may am talking about the High Grade, because I would not recommend the Master Grade. Now, um, there is another mobile suit that doesn't, that isn't called the Exia, but uses the Exia mold. It's called the Astria. Um, you might have seen my video, that review that I did of one of the variants of it. I'm going to get to that one, but we're going to start out with the basic vanilla Astria which is just called the Astria. There's a, a high-grade kit of it. Um, it does use the old hip design, which means there's no thigh swivel. However, it's not too bad and kind of forgivable since it's a pretty awesome kit. It has a completely new armor set that replaces the old one, but you still get the old armor set. So you can convert it back into an XC if you want to. It has a new sword, bazooka, rifle. It just got a few new weapons that are pretty awesome. There's a, a high-grade 1 100th of it. But you just have to keep in mind that um, the high grade 100th cannot be fully converted back into Exia because you don't get the weapons for the Exia and you don't get the shoulder pads for the Exia. So I'd recommend going with the one with the normal high grade over the 1 100th. Um, then there's the version that I review. This is called the high grade Astria Type F. This one not only has all those weapons that the uh, Astria did, but it actually adds quite a few more, including like a sort of flail weapon a extending bazooka, a pair of handguns with holsters, a missile pod. It's just packed with weapons. And of course, you still get all the original Exia's weapons. And it has like one and a half armor sets because you can also turn it into the Exia F, the uh, Astria F2, which is a slightly tweaked version. And you can convert it back into like a red and magenta Exia because it has a different color scheme that's not as white as the normal Exia. And it's just, it's a really awesome kit. Um, if you remember, I said that the Avalanche Exia was the best Exia that used the normal Exia colors. Well, this is the best high-grade Exia overall. Um, it's just really cool. And again, there is a 1 100th of it. It um, does not have the extra weapons. However, it has the same weapons loadout as the standard Astria. And again, you don't get the uh, Exia weapons or the uh, shoulder pads to convert it back into an Exia. So it's really not a good option. I'd recommend, again, going with the high-grade. So... That was a lot of talking. Let's go back and see uh, sort of what the sort of overview is. If you want the absolute best version of the original Exia design, go with the real grade. It's just the best option you have. Now, as for variants, the best one that uses the original Exia's color scheme 
is the Avalanche Exia high grade, not the 100th, the normal high grade. It's fairly easy to get a hold of, um, and again, if you really want to, you can convert it back into the original Exia. I don't know why you would, but it's an option. And finally, my personal favorite is the high grade Astria Type F. It's, um, it's pretty awesome. Like I said, I just mentioned it, so I'm not going to go over it, but um, you know why it's good. I just said it again. Uh, also, Exia Dark Matter is a pretty cool kit. It's not the greatest one, but it is pretty awesome. So I hope that helps sort of break down the differences between these kits. Um, this is the second sound wave. I'm hopefully going to make this a series, and until then, see you next time.